which is the chronicle, chronicle delta operator. That's an operator, that's an, uh, an additional operator that we use because it simplifies our life. Typically, it's denoted by delta. It's a two indices operator, so the uh, index i and index j. So the value of the operator is either one or zero, nothing else. It's one when indices i, index i, is equal to index j. And otherwise, when i is different from j, is zero. And in general, it would take the value one to three because we are working in three dimensions. And so that's the, the typical value that takes it. So for instance, what does that mean? That delta one one, delta two two, delta t three is going to be one because indices are the same. When delta one two equal delta one three equal delta two one equal delta three one, etc., all the other, all the remaining indices are equal zero. So look that it's a symmetric uh, operator. So when I just permute i j times by j i, then I just okay, obtain the same result, either zero, typically zero. That another property is that if delta i i, which using Einstein's notations, means that's a repeated index, so that means the sum of delta one one, i equal one, i equal two, i equal three, so the sum of this, is the sum of these three, so it's, it's three, okay? And then there is a property that sometimes we may use, which is the following. If I do that operation, delta ij times uj, look, here the repeated index, the mute index is j, okay? So, and the, and the corresponding uh, talking index is i, because it's not repeated. And then look that since that is zero, excepting when the indices are the same, this, which is a summatory, it's only different from zero for j equal i. So that, the resulting of that is when it's ui, because it's the only term when j is equal to y, which is different to zero. The other terms are zero. So that's a way that sometimes is used by multiplying delta ij times uj. Maybe you are getting used in the future to say, well, now it's like replacing index j by index i. That's what it is. Okay, any questions? <coughs> the same. What if I want to replace index j by index i here? So that's a product in which delta ij times ajk, the mute index, the repeated index is j. This term will be zero unless i is equal to j. So of this symmetry, the only different term is that where j is equal to i, so a, a, k. So what I've done at the end of the day is just replacing j times i. Okay, that's a way to just extract a certain, a certain, a certain uh, index from uh, an operation. Okay, that's the chronic level. There is another operation which is called the permutation operator. It's denoted E, E, in which it's a three indices operation. I, J, K. That's quite used also in, 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 computer, in, in, in continuum mechanics. The values of this operator is, can be just three. Zero, one, or minus one. When is zero? That is the opposite of the other side. When I, J, K are some of them repeated, then is zero. When the three indices are different from each other, all them, then is either one or minus one. So whenever there is a repeated index here, the value of the operator is zero. And whenever uh, the, the three indices are different, then the values are different, the values can be one or minus one, depending on what? Depending on the order of the indices. How do we know if they are well or ordered so that the result is one, or ordered so that the result is minus one? Look. If we place the number one, two, three in a clockwise sense, so following the, 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 the clock sense, then if you we move according to the numeration, the numbering, if we move in the clockwise sense, for instance, one, two, three, one, two, three, or two, three, one, or three, one, two, we are always moving in the clockwise sense, then the value is one. Otherwise, if we are moving 
in the anticlockwise sense, so 2, 1, 3, or 1, 3, 2, or 3, 2, 1, then it's minus 1. Look, the most, most of, the, of the indices, how many indices are here? Well, 3 uh, to the 3. So that's uh, 27, 27 values of that. Most of them are zero, because they involve repeated indexes. Only are different from zero, six. These three, which are equal to plus one, these three, which are equal to minus one. Why do we use that? Because that will allow us representing some complex operations in just a simple, a simple expression. Okay? Just take that. that. That's something that it's part of our nomenclature. Look that. If I just change the order of two indices, for instance, jk, I, I just change kj, then the sense moves from clockwise to anticlockwise, so then it changes the sense. Okay? So changing one side, then uh, of the, uh, changing the, the, sorry, changing the, the order of two indices, then inter in, in, in interchanging two indices, then the results uh, the, the result changes from 1 to minus 1, or from minus 1 to 1, okay? That is an example. There will be some examples then. If you have time, I'll do some, but otherwise I, left, I leave them to you uh, do it at, at, at home, so for your home, homework. That's not the same one, but for instance, it's easy, easy to prove that AIJK times AIJK, look, this is an operation, so the, 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 all the indices are how are those indices? Mute or talking? In this expression. I is repeated, right? So it's mute. That means that we are summing on I. J is repeated. Okay? And K is repeated. So the result is going to be something with no index. Something with no index is a scalar. So that's going to be a number. And this number is going to be six. Okay, that can be proven, for instance. If I write just the expression, that expression, is the sum of all these terms. Maybe I can be patient and at home and do. For i equal, for instance, I take i equal 1 and then j equal 1 and then I just vary key from 1 to 3. So that's a, e11, e11, e112. So look that the first two indices are 1 and the third is moving from 1 to 3. That's the first three terms of the sum. Then, keeping i and j equal 1, I make, uh, sorry, keeping i equal 1, I make j equal 2, and then k equal 1 to 3, which is this row here. And so, so on here. Then, I've changed i to 2. 2, and then I do, do j equal 1, j equal 2, j equal 3, and for every of these cases, I place k equal 1, k equal 2, k equal 3, and obtain this term and also finally this time. So finally, there are s uh, nine times nine times nine, there are 20, 27 terms. How many of those terms are different from zero? Only those in which the operator, the term, the, the, the component of the uh, permutation operator have indices which are different from zero, They're different from each other. So anytime there is a repeated index here, an index which is repeated here, then the value is zero. So we can just cross all these terms. And if we found this time here, this is one, two, three, one, two, three. So this is one and this is one. The product is one. Okay? This can be cancelled. And here I find, I find a, a, a term which is one, three, two times one, three, two. So this, every term, this epsilon, one, three, two, look, one, three, two, we move anticlockwise. So it's minus one. But this is also minus one, so the product is one. So this term, this product, is one, and this product is one. And the same can do when we find that different from zero, there are these two terms here, these two terms here, and these two terms here. So, and every one of them can be checked that uh, the product is, this is one, three, one, two, is one, because uh, we are moving <coughs> clockwise, and this is, one, two, so the product is one. So finally, how many, how many of those terms who are different from zero 
and all them summing one. So uh, this is one, 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 one. So it's one in six. Okay, that's good. I mean, just developing. 